open up your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 4. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 18 through 22. So Matthew chapter 4, 18 through 22. And while you're doing that, I want you to turn to your neighbors around you and say, Jesus looks good on you. <laughs> hey, man, say it like you mean it, right? Look at the Jesus looks good on you. Man, I see him on you. I smell him on you. So good. So good. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. If you got it, say amen. Amen. If you need a minute, say I need a minute. Good. I'm glad. Let's stand as we read God's word today. Matthew chapter 4, looking at verses 18 through 22. I'm going to be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. It says this. It says, As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, he meaning Jesus. He saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, preparing nets. And he called to them. Immediately they left the boat and their father, or they left their boat and their father and followed him. God, we sure do love you. Father, we thank you, God, for the opportunity that we have here today. God, we have the opportunity just to be changed by you. And so, Holy Spirit, just move in us right now. Just move in us, speak in us, encourage us, walk, walk us through the things that we need to be walking through. And Father, and I just pray that uh, you would open up our eyes, God, so that we can see your word more clearly. And Father, I ask that you would <clears throat> open up our ears so we can hear your word more clearly. And Father, open up our hearts so we can feel your word more clearly. Because God, we want more. And so Lord, we just ask this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As you're sitting down, turn to three people and say, you have been invited. You have been invited. <laughs> You have been invited. Have you ever accepted an invitation that changed your life? Have you ever accepted an invitation that changed your life? Let me give you an example, right? An opportunity uh, at a different job that moved you to a different state. Or maybe it was the opportunity to adopt a child. Or accepting the marriage proposal from your wife. Or coming to church because someone invited you. Yes. Or receiving the invitation to step into a relationship with Jesus. So Peter, Andrew, James, and John, they grew up in the family business. They grew up in the family business of fishing. They had the boats, they had the nets, they had the material, they had the knowledge, the wisdom. They grew up under their, their father, John and James, and just learning how to fish. And that's all they did. That's what they did for a living when they became men. They made their living this way by fishing because this is all they knew. This is what they knew to do. But here's the other thing. They also grew up going to temple. They also grew up going to church and hearing the scriptures of the Messiah that is to come. And they heard scriptures like this. I'll put them up on the, uh, on the screen for you. They heard scriptures like this out of Genesis 3. It says, And I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. They, were, they heard these things of Christ's ministry that will, that will come and destroy the devil's work. They heard out of Micah 5 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrath, through you, uh, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be rule, who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. It says, "Hey, the Messiah Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem." They're studying this. They're learning this. They're learning this in Sunday school. In Isaiah seven fourteen, they heard verses like this. Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, 
and will call him Emmanuel. This is going to be a virgin birth, and he will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Meaning God with us. They heard scriptures from Isaiah 35. Then the eyes of the blind will uh, be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then, uh, then will the lame leap like deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the deserts. Jesus would be would have a miraculous ministry. They're hearing this. They're studying this. They're listening to this. They heard this in Daniel uh, chapter 7. He said, In a vision tonight I looked, and therefore before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, listen to this, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and people of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. The Messiah will have a throne that is everlasting. And these fishermen, these, these, these guys, Peter and, and James and John and Andrew, they heard this every time they went to temple. They heard this every time they went to church as a, as a, as a, as a lad and they growing up and becoming men. They grew up hearing this and they grew up memorizing these scriptures that there will be one day someone who is coming. The Messiah is coming. And the Old Testament was, was setting up from, uh, uh, for the coming of Jesus. And they know this. And they believed this. And they were expecting this to happen. You know, I've always wondered in, in the scripture that we just read. I wondered that if they ever talked about how cool it would be, right, if the Messiah showed up while we were alive. You ever had any questions or thoughts like that, conversations like that? Wouldn't it be cool if Jesus came back when we were still alive? Hello? Is this John? Have you ever had those conversations? You ever had it? Oh, yeah, just the other day, right? Talking about, wouldn't it be awesome that we would be here when Jesus showed up and we were in his presence? Wouldn't that be cool? Yes. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to retrain them, Lord. We're going to have to retrain them, right? So I wonder if they had those same kind of questions. I wonder if they had those same kind of conversations. While they're working on the boat, wouldn't it be cool if, if the Messiah showed up just show up. Wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't it be the coolest thing if we were still here? I bet you they would be asking, well, yeah, well, how would you respond if he showed up one day when we got off of work? What would you do? <laughs> right? I wonder if they did that. Well, guess what? Jesus is taking a stroll on the beach of Galilee. The men, Peter and Andrew and James and John, are in the boats and they're working. Let's look at Matthew 4 again. Let's put that up on the screen, right? I want to show you something. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, we're talking about Jesus. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers. Simon was called Peter, his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus says, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately. Say immediately. immediately. Say immediately. immediately. Right? They, didn't have, they didn't have to think for a minute. They didn't have to say, let's get closer. Let's see who this character is. No, no. It said immediately. Say immediately. Immediately. immediately they left their nets and followed him. They didn't clock off of work. They didn't clock off on their time clock. They didn't pull the nets in. They just left it there, left their boat there, got out of the boat immediately and followed him. Because I heard this in church. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, preparing their nets. And he called out to them. Immediately. Say immediately. immediately. How soon did they get out of the boat? Immediately. Immediately they left the boat and their dad. And followed him. They're like, dad? 
You're on your own. You got to haul in all this, all this fish, all the nets. Uh, you're gonna have to clean it yourself. You're gonna have to. Bye. Peace out. See ya. That's how it was, right? Because the Bible says they left when? Immediately. Immediately. They probably didn't even say anything to the dead. Like, oh, sorry, out. So I was like, boys, where are you going? I'm going to tell your mother. Right? So, here they are. They got out of the boat. Why? Because this is Jesus. If Jesus was to come through these doors right here, and he said, follow me, how many of you would say, I need a minute? I guarantee you, you would get up and leave. Leave your purses, leave everything, and get up and go. In fact, I believe Jacob would take his oxygen off because he would have needed in the presence of Jesus, and he would go. In fact, I believe that when Jesus comes through these doors, Jacob is going to be able to run to Jesus. I believe that if Jesus came through this door, Jacob would be able to stand up straight and not have a crooked back in Jesus' name. I believe that some of you who are battling some illness or something, when Jesus comes in, he brings in his glory and his healing, and you will be healed instantly. In Jesus' name. I forgot to tell you, Jesus is here. Amen. This is Jesus. This is the one that they grew up hearing about in church. This is the one who is calling them by name to come follow me. Right, they get out of the boat immediately and they're thinking, oh my gosh, he knows my name. Right, he wants me to follow him. He wants, he, he's choosing me. <laughs> when he said, come follow me, they're probably like, why am I still in this boat? <laughs> right, immediately they left everything behind and they just followed him. But listen, I want you to listen closely. He didn't just call out to them to follow him. He was calling them to be his disciples. That was so good that you're going to write that down. He didn't call them just to follow him. He was calling them out to be his disciples. So I have this question for you. Has a similar situation like this happened to you? Through his word, you're reading God's word, you're having church in your home, whether it be in your, your prayer room, at your kitchen table, wherever. Through his word, God calls you to action in a specific circumstance. But your instincts and your experience tells you that it won't work. Anybody here had that situation? My, my hands are up. Okay? In your life. Here's the thing. We... We have to remember that our instincts and our experiences have been distorted by sin. We can't see things perfectly. We, we lack information. Our, our understanding is flawed. And that's why we depend on the Almighty God who is all-knowing and, and can accomplish the impossible. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you have been invited. <laughs> now that you've been invited, check this out. Matthew 16, 24 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him just deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Let me read that again. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Then Jesus said to the people of living water, the people said to the people sitting in these chairs. Then, then Jesus said to those who are not sitting in these chairs. He said, if anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. In order to follow Jesus, you must be willing to say no to your own desires. What do you want me to do today, God? I want to follow you. John 8, 12 says this, Then Jesus spoke to them again. Then Jesus spoke to you again. Then Jesus spoke to living water again. He says, I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. That means you're going to have an automatic flashlight. Those who choose to follow him will never walk in the darkness. 
Do you believe that? You will have the light of life in you. That's Jesus. You will see the darkness and you will want to avoid it because nothing hap- nothing good happens in darkness. Amen. Amen. So when you find yourself entering into a dark situation, remember that you have the light of life in you. And all you got to do is turn that light on. Can I tell you something? The light never goes off. And when you are walking around with Jesus in your heart, and Jesus in your light, and the light is shining. And I'm not talking about one of those little small flashlights, full flashlights. I'm talking about like a um, satellite kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Where, where it comes out as a, you know the humming that comes from a, from a light. Right? It's shining everything. Right? Darkness has to flee. That's how big Jesus is. Huge, bigger than the sun. And you got him living in you. Woo! Woo! It's exciting. I don't know what's going on here. Lord, help them. So the disciples jump out of the boat. How fast did they jump out of the boat? Immediately. They left their workplace and started to follow Jesus. Saying they sat under his teachings. Growing more in him. Listen, when we start to follow Jesus, we start to we start to look like him, don't we? Come on. Yeah. You ever seen people in their pets? They <laughs> haven't their pets long enough. Who looks like who? Right? So when you're hanging out with Jesus, when you're reading in his word, when you're praying, when you're spending time with Jesus, come on. Don't you start looking like him? Yeah? Don't we start acting like him? Come on, don't we start speaking like him? Don't we start thinking like him? Right? Walking like the one who you are following? He said, come follow me. You want to get in step with him, behind him, and therefore you want to walk like him. Woo! Sometimes my, some people who knew my dad said, you walk like your father. I want to walk like my heavenly father. That's what I want to walk. I want to think like him. I want to talk like him. I want to look like him. I want to speak like Jesus. That's what I want. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. And when you start hanging out with Jesus like that, and you start looking like him, how can you not if you start doing all those things? <clears throat> I told you on Monday, I was going to hit the ground and run and sprinting. I got some news right before I went on my prayer walk. So Oh, God, it's devastating news. A friend of mine lost his uh, his niece. Oh, my gosh. He called me up praying with him. And I'm just, oh, Lord. You know, it was just, who? Uh, so here I am. I'm on my walk. And I'm just, I'm just thinking about this niece of his. And I'm just praying and seeking him. Uh, you know, and so <clears throat> I said, God, I just want to know what's on your heart. You know, you, you know what's on my heart, but I want to know what's on your heart. Just tell me today. And he says this, he says instantly, he said to me, he says, Jason, I want people to know me. He says, I don't want people to just know my name. I don't want people to understand how to spell my name. I don't want people believing that there must be a power, a higher power. But I just want people to believe in me. I want them to know me like you do. I was like, oh Lord, I, I need to know you more. You see, here's the thing. All he wants is you to know him. You know that, that God does not care. Jesus does not care about a church constitution. He doesn't care what kind of car you drive. He doesn't care what's in your 401k, how tall you are, how many degrees you have, what brand of shoe you wear, where you live. He just wants you to know it. That's all he wants. Because I guarantee you, if you know God, you know his son, and you have been saved by grace through faith. He just wants you 
to know him. And it doesn't matter if you go out and you say, well, I know how to spell his name, or I know that there's a higher power, or I'll talk about him later. Talk about him now. Right. Jeff and I, Willoughby, we went out street evangelism. Uh, we just went out to street evangelize on Tuesday. Tuesday. <clears throat> Man, I couldn't wait. Couldn't wait. 10 30 could not come fast enough for me. We meet downtown at the depot. And, and, we, and we just stand there at the depot, and he's like, Where do you want to go? I don't know where you want to go. <laughs> right? And we just wait for Holy Spirit. We were on Capitol. I said, Hey, we're on Capitol. Let's go down Capitol. So we're going down Capitol. We're having our conversation. In our pockets, we have the tracks and the Bibles and, and a small little uh, book called Case for Christ. We're pulling up on this lady. This lady's on a break. She's on her phone, right? She's on her phone, leaning up against the wall, and she's, and she's smoking. Jeff walks up to her. He says, hey, can I interest you in this track? And she says, well, you know, I'm on break, um, and so I don't have a lot of time. He says, uh, it'll only take me a minute. I said, I'll time him. <laughs> she's like, I'm timing him, too. <laughs> I left him. Because there's another lady just down the street who was on her phone smoking, and I was like, I'm going to go get her. <laughs> He's still talking to her. She's like, i got to go in. She took a track. I went across the street uh, to a kid who was sitting on the bench and just started witnessing to him. After it was all said and done, he came back, and he led this woman to Christ while smoking a cigarette. Isn't that cool? disconnect. I got off the grid. I did all this stuff. We're just hanging. Right? And it was Wednesday while we were there, and I asked God who he wanted me to talk to. Now listen, I didn't ask God who he wanted me to witness to. I said, God, who do you want me to talk to? So we go to the beach. We got. We didn't go to the pool. We went to the beach. Uh, if you get a chance to go hang out in the Caribbean Sea, go do it. It is amazing. I love it. Right? And I'm, I'm in the ocean. I'm about 200 yards away from Trudy. She's on the beach. And I'm waist deep, 200 yards away from the beach. And I'm waist deep. That's how cool it was, right? I mean, if you're going to get attacked from a shark, you're going to see it coming. I mean, that's how clear the water was, right? And all of a sudden, I hear this like bullhorn, like a uh, uh, shafar horn just being blown. And I'm looking around and I'm like, what is that noise, right? And this guy comes up to me, and his name is Tony, right? And he's uh, uh, he's from Jamaica, so he's got the dreads, he's got the snorkel gear, and his glasses on. He's like, hey, brother, because everybody's brother in Jamaica. Hey, brother. He says, I want you to blow in this, right? This is what he was, this is what he was doing, right? So he catches these things, uh, and so he cleans them out. And he says, I want you to blow them. He goes, you know how to blow uh, a trumpet? I was like, yeah, I know how to blow a trumpet. He goes, awesome. Well, take this, cover the finger, put your finger on the sole, and blow on it. And I said, okay, I'll blow on it. And that's what it sounded like. <laughs> <laughs> Red. 
My granddaughter grabs this and she goes, I can call donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, I can do that. <coughs> and he says, all right, brother. Listen, he goes, this is 20 bucks. I have bigger ones that are $40. Do you want to buy one? I'm in the ocean. Yeah, let me grab my wallet real quick. <laughs> the credit card? Right? I said, no, 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 no. But my wife, let me go to my wife. And he says, I'm going to trust you. And I say, brother, I'm going to make it worth your while. I bought the $20 one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So I get, into, I get off to the beach, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to make it worth my while. But God, what do you want me to do? And he says, I want you to give him $100. So I go up to Trudy, and I said, hey, do we have a $100 bill? Because if we didn't have a $100 bill, I was going to give him $60. <laughs> she says, she says, why? <laughs> and she sees I have this shit. <laughs> She's like, we gotta fly home. <laughs> and I said, I need to give this guy $100. And she said, did the Lord tell you to? I was like, yes. Without hesitation, she said, here you go. I go back out there and uh, and I hand him the hundred dollar bills and I said, hey, I told you I'd make it worth your while, but this is not for me. And he says, okay. And I said, this is from Jesus. And I want you to know something. I prayed for you today. Before I got here, I asked God, who do you want me to talk to today? And Tony, it's you. And I said, so I want you to know he loves you. He goes, hey, brother, I have Jesus. And I said, Give me that money back. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I said, I said, I need a bigger. Right? I said, what? And he goes, yeah, I've got Jesus. In fact, before I came into this resort, I was bumping my Jesus music, right? And he says, um, and I had it bumping. I turned it off, and the people were in the parking lot, they're like, no, brother, you turn that back on. And I was like, he's like, okay. He goes, I've got Jesus. I love him. I was like, me too, brother. I love him too. And he says, and this is how I make my living. I sell these seashells and weed. <laughs> so he and I smoked a little bit. <laughs> Went into the spirit realm. And so, <laughs> that was not true. That was not true. <laughs> Everybody in Jamaica sells weed, okay? I mean, that's the cologne, that's the atmosphere that you smell out there. Right? Uh, and it was cool, man. He let me pray with him. Uh, and I was, just praying, I was just praying with my brother. And here's what I said. I said, I probably won't ever see you again. But I promise you, I'll find you in heaven. And I can't wait for that day. Right? I'll look for you at the weed tree. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> so Thursday comes around, I'm still asking God, who do you want me to talk to? And we're looking for like uh, trinkets to buy our kids, you know, you know, souvenirs. We're walking to the store, we're the only ones, truly, we're the only ones in there. And there's a guy, uh, he's from India, and his name is Jay, Jay from India. Uh, and he's got uh, his uh, co-worker who's from Jamaica, and her name is Iris, I think it is. Uh, and we just come in and they're like, hey, um, anything you want, you go ahead and, and, and you buy it. Well, I think that's how it works, right? You think I want, I gotta buy it. Uh, and so he starts talking to me, truly shopping, uh, and he's like, you know, uh, I'm from India. I don't know how we got on that. I was like, oh my gosh, I, I worked with a lady when I was in Disney World from India. She told me how to say hello. I said, it's game show. He got super stoked, right? Because in India, the main language there is, is Hindi, right? But there are 100, 150 dialects there, different kind of dialects. I spoke his language when I said hello. I said, game show. And he's like, his eyes lit up, right? And he's just like, you just said hello to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that means that lady wasn't lying to me, right? <laughs> so then I said, me ma'a quanto 
which means my leg is broken, right? Because I asked her, I said, if I'm ever in India and I break my leg, I got to know. I just said, my leg is broken. So it's Mimao Bhattani Nacho. So I said that to him, and he looked at me funny. He says, your leg is broken? Surely shopping and and and, 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 he and I, he's writing down how to speak his language. I mean, we're connecting, right? Uh, what do you do? I'm a pastor in America. Uh, listen, can I tell you something? If you go outside of America, nobody knows where Wyoming is. Nobody. Okay? But they know where Colorado is. So you just tell them the next rectangle say right above, okay? And then they go, oh. Mm. Okay? So here we are, and this lady, Iris, she was just like, she found out I was a pastor, and she goes, uh, listen, I, I listen to Back to the Bible on the radio. Are you on it? <laughs> no, I'm not on it. But I've heard about it, and I'm glad you're investing in it and doing all this stuff, right? And so uh, we've exchanged phone numbers. He took a picture of Trudy and I, and, uh, you know, and usually in places like that, I like to negotiate, you know? I, I know that the shirt's 25, but... I'll give you 24 for it. I didn't have to do any negotiating. They did it for me. Right? They totally did it. He's like, I know the shirt is 25, but I'll give it to you for 18. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Right? And then he goes, I know this is 10 bucks, but I'll give it to you for five. I was like, I felt like we were robbing the guy. But he was robbing himself. And I told Trudy, the longer we stay here, we're blocking you. We'll get free stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Right, so cost came up to a certain amount of things, right? And so we gave him, you know, extra because yeah, how are you going to survive? Right, so we gave him extra. And he's like, no, 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 no. Anything off the shelf you can, you can have for the extra. I was like, this is not how this tip works. But okay. Right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? Uh, and so we got to meet these uh, meet these folks and just witness to him, right? He is not a believer, but she is. And the thing is, is that he's he's Hindu. We exchange numbers. He asked her, he goes, are you a father? Right to me. And she goes, oh yeah, he's got kids. No, 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 no. He meant like priest wise, right? Uh, are you a father? And he's, so in his phone, it says, Father Jason. I texted him when we landed in Rome. I said, Jay, we made it. So blessed to meet you. Can't wait to converse with you. He's like, hey, father. <laughs> Right? No, it was amazing. I, getting to meet people. But back to Wednesday after we left the ocean and got into the water, to the, to the pool. And this is where God started speaking to me. I don't know about you. I don't know if you know this about me, but every time I get around the water, the Lord starts speaking. This is how it works, okay? Uh, you would probably think that he speaks to me a lot in the shower. He does not. He does, but not like this. So I get in the pool, right? And when you're in this, when you're in a pool, water is contained, correct? Yeah. Right. So I'm in this pool, so it looks stationary. But once I got in it, I could see that it was moving, right? Almost like a river flowing. Okay. There was a small breeze that day, but not enough to make it look like it was flowing. Does that make sense? Yeah. You with me? Now, if I stood up in the water, it looked normal. But if I got down into the water at eye level, you could see that it was flowing. It was flowing smooth. It, it was, the ripples were good. I actually called Trudy into the water. I wanted her to experience this, right? Uh, listen, Trudy never gets into the water except to cool off. And then when she cools off, she goes back into the shade so she can get wider. And so... <laughs> It's a true story. <clears throat> so she's in the water and she tells me, she says, okay, but water is always moving. I said, no, 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 not because that we're in the pool or because people were in the pool. It's flowing. So here I am sitting in this like three foot of water where I'm at eye level and I'm watching it do this, right? And I'm just being blessed and I'm seeing this. And then the Lord tells me this. He says, Jason, the pool is living water. He's talking about us. Okay? You with me? He says, the pool is living water. It may look contained and it may look stationary. 
But once you get in it, you see it moving because of the Holy Spirit. It's not the wind that makes things move. It's the Holy Spirit that makes things move. At least for us. And then he said, Jason, we're losing focus. Don't lose focus. And I knew exactly what he meant. <laughs> I knew exactly what he was talking about. He was telling us, he was telling me, Jason, you got to get back to the basics. Because when you get back to the basics, you're going to see living water move more. Say more. More. No, 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 no. Say like you want more, like you're starving and you're hungry and they just put a slop of whatever on there, on your plate, but there's a steak and you want more. Say more. More. Yes. It is going to be powered by the Holy Spirit. More. Say more. More. And then he started showing me people, you sitting in this, these, these chairs, and he started showing me people stepping up into leadership. And I started... I actually started speaking to these folks the moment we came home. Here's the thing. The reason why I was losing focus was because I was taking on ministries and I was grabbing on to positions and other things and I was wearing myself out. And I knew I was wearing myself out. But I would never tell you. I'd tell my wife. <laughs> but I'd never tell you. He says, get back to the basics. Right? Living water exists to impact the community through the movement of Jesus Christ, transforming our city through his living water, and we must do it together. We must do it together. And he was right. He was right. And I see in, in, my, in my mind's eye, I see this wall full of like Hangers, right? Like when you would hang up your jacket up in the school. You know what I'm talking about? Yes? Yeah. With me? Hooks. Yeah. Captain Hook stuff, right? And that's what I saw. And on these on these hooks were lanyards, right? And on these lanyards were like little name tags. And each lanyard represented a ministry. Now I cannot take, I can, I can take all those men on those lanyards and put them on me. And I can be the jack of all trade. Or I can leave those lanyards up there and allow the ones who were called to do those ministries to grab that lanyard and put it on and let's go to work. Let's go to work together. Ladies and gentlemen, family, there is a wall full of hooks and a wall full of ministries waiting for you. Because I can't do it by myself. And when you get into living water, you're going to start experiencing it and seeing it move. Right? So here's the thing. So right here, you see all these uh, signs, right? You saw um, Thomas and Stephanie hold the signs when he came in. We're going back to that. I don't care how cold it is. I don't care if there's blizzards outside. I don't care if a hurricane or a tsunami hits Wyoming. It's okay. People outside of America don't even know where we are anymore. Right? <laughs> but we're going to hold these up on the streets. We're going to let people know not to give up, that Jesus loves you, to believe in yourself, and smile. You look great. You're loved. Jesus looks good on you. You are amazing. You're valuable. You are important. We have another sign that says, today's your day. We're going to be a part of that. We're going to be investing in our community more. Say more. More. When I got home from our trip, I received this phone call, this phone call from Family Promise. Asking if we would like to partner up with them. Tell me that's not God calling on my door. Tell me that's not God knocking on the door. He says, you want more? I have to call you. Hello. I called her back. She and I started talking. Right? And we were getting jazzed up. We were getting excited. I can't wait to partner with you. I can't wait to partner with you. We're going to be a partner with this. We're just getting after it. Right? It was amazing. I received a text. From the crisis center, you know, the youth crisis center that we've been loving on and taking care of. And they were asking if we were still interested in bringing the ice cream truck out to them to serve their kids. I asked her in the beginning of August, never heard back from her until I got back from my trip, uh, our trip from Jamaica. And she says, we're ready now. People 
people, kids who were locked up, were bringing ice cream to them to let them know the people on the outside, we see you, we love you. Not only that, we want to bless the staff and the uh, lieutenants out there, the police officers. On us, on us, we want you to, to know that God is, uh, that God loves you. You just can't tell me that God's not ready for us to move more. So I'm ready to move more. I just want people to know him. So we need to have a community coordinator. Someone who is going to be able to reach out into the community and partner up with our people. Partner up with those who we are partnered up with. Uh, so you know that we are partnered up with USI, Unattended Student Initiative, right? So that means the homeless teenagers here in town. Uh, Camilla House, that's our homeless shelter, right? Habitat for Humanity, the Crisis Center, uh, Life Choice, Needs, Family Promise, right? Now, um, I know I'm missing one. Safe House, uh, we're partnering up with them. And while I was praying uh, in the pool, God showed me this person. And I approached this person because she was at a Bible study at our house the other day, and I just said, hey, her name's Clarice, by the way. You may know her. I said, Clarice, God has been putting it on my heart for you to be a community coordinator for Living Water. And she says, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> oh, you will. <laughs> we sat down and had a conversation in Bible study. I explained everything. She <coughs> Jason, I want to tell you something. She said, I can share this. And she's not here. She's in Mexico. So take it. Okay? <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I told, uh, she says, I've been praying for months. God, what do you want me to do? And in the pool in Jamaica, he says, Jason, I need you to talk to Clarice. She said yes, by the way. And when she gets back, yeah, yeah, yeah. And when she gets back from her trip, we're meeting with Family Promise uh, and we're getting things going. She actually called me up and said, Pastor, I was at Cornerstone. This is before she left. I was at Cornerstone. I was talking to the guy there. Uh, he asked what church I went to. I said, Living Water. And he goes, Oh, yeah, Pastor Jason, right? She's like, yeah, he's my pastor. And so she started talking about the ministry that they're doing. She says, what do you think about that? And I said, you're the community coordinator. You're the community coordinator. What do you want us to do? Right? We're going after it. And so, um, so when you see her, I said, I'm going to introduce you. She goes, I won't be there. I said, I'll reintroduce you next time. Right? That's what we're going to do, right? Here's the other thing. We're going to build our Christmas Eve serving bigger. Say bigger. Yes, yeah. bigger right? So we're going to get back to the basics. And we're going to stay there. Turn to your neighbor and say you're invited. You're invited. So the question is, is, you need to be asking Jesus, who do you want me to talk to today? Who do you want me to connect to today? You need to start inviting people to Jesus and bringing them to church with you. Listen, you don't have to preach to them. You just need to invite them to come. Because he wants people to truly know him. And Jesus said, follow me. And I gotta be honest with you. That is one powerful invitation. So that